we, we had a faculty forum where we were talking about students and their experiences at Ivy. And every year we have a student experience survey and, and, and hear back. And, and you know, we, we had heard a number of years and, and there were some troubling incidents reported. And, and our new dean, Sharon Hodgson, was listening in and she said, well, why don't we do what we do best and write some cases about this? And so Kanina and I immediately wanted to jump up and say, yes, let's do that. So that was uh, that was sort of a triggering event. But actually, this these cases are the result of um, many years of work that we've done over time. Right, Kanina? Absolutely. And in fact, I might even go further back in time, Allison, and I think about the course that you started at Ivy back. I'm going to say around 2012, Women in Leadership. And um, what you really started was opening that dialogue about gender and leadership. And what we know from research that myself and others have done is that once that conversation opens up, there were other topics that students felt liberated to be able to bring up, topics that were so important to them that that class open the door to ask questions that were on their minds and in their hearts. And so this has been something I think that has been developing and has, has grown. We see these issues that are important to students, administrators, and instructors. I think it's only natural that we're going to um, use the tools we have available to us, which is all three of us are big case writers. We love writing cases. And so when we want to engage, really engage our students in a topic, it's wonderful to be able to write a case about it and bring it in in a formal way um, and, and, and experience the issue. Rather than talking about it academically or theoretically, we actually get to to get to jump into it. So I think that's that's much of the impetus behind this case is finding a way to bring it into the classroom so that we can we can um, so we can surmount some of these issues that we've seen come up. And if I could also say something a little bit about the format, it's a series of mini cases. It's not one long case. And um I find that that is a very valuable format for a, a social concept like like these kinds of sensitive dynamics and emotionally charged issues um, that can be expressed in so many different ways, but still have sort of this core dynamic happening. Um, having multiple mini cases really communicates that to students is that this phenomenon manifests in a variety of ways and, and, and affects many, many groups of people, not just one. So we've moved the lesson from years ago, um, sexual harassment was discussed in, in women in leadership class and my students asked me, Allison, this, should, this sexual harassment should be discussed in the core. And so um, I made a concerted effort to move the sexual harassment cases into the core and we successfully did that for years. Executives would come to class and we would discuss again a series of mini cases to show the range of what happens and executives would talk about how um, policy what policies are in organizations and what is the current management practice and it was incredibly rich and valuable for students. So, um, so over the years we've developed that further to build um, on a broader set of bullying and harassment issues. Again, it's not just sexual harassment, although that is a component. It's one of a family of types of harassment that happen to really create toxic areas of an organizational culture. And that's something that leaders really need to worry about. It's important to help our students be able to learn before they get into the workplace to be able to have some of these discussions. And you made such an important, you use that word bullying, and I wonder how much of this also is that 
we've seen a maturation in our understanding of harassment to microaggressions and to really understand that sometimes it's not that one big moment or that seminal case or that seminal point in your life where it all comes together and you have to deal with it, that many people, especially when we look at topics around social justice, they see microaggressions over and over and over again. And the power of the many kids' cases, and I remember you um, presenting that to me as the idea that we could we could choose, is that it incites the imagination of the student, of their own lived experience. It doesn't have to be built into 10 pages. A paragraph is enough for many students, and I think we've been seeing that, Karen, I as, as people read it, they connect with maybe an experience they've had or something they've seen, and it's an opportunity to enter into that discussion. 